Okay, we are live. <laughs> Welcome to 2024. I think I'm going to start with that. Uh, I can't believe it's a new year, right? <laughs> it came it came so quickly. We had a very busy holiday season, and I'm really excited about my first guest of 2024 <laughs> today. Yay. It's going to be a. I think we're going to be very real today <laughs> in this episode. I think 2024. Oh my God, I could tell personal stories, but we don't have time. <laughs> Um, should mark the year of really being real to each other and truly helping each other. Uh, my name is Jasmine Sandler, and I am the host of Warrior Women in Business. I own uh, JS Media, which is an executive branding and digital market, marketing optimization company. Since 2006, we've been doing this work, um, helping companies and brands really help them to improve in their marketing and get their brands out there. And in 2016, and I believe Sonia, you might have been there. I was speaking mm -hmm. at the Women's Leadership Exchange Conference. Yes. And I, I looked out into the sea of like awesome women. And at the time, I, I had another, I had another podcast called The Untruth, and I was interviewing CEO, CEOs across the country, trying to get out the truths of their business, men and mm -hmm. women. But anyways, I did this keynote, and I looked out to the sea of women, and I this light bulb went off, and I was like, you know what, Jasmine, you should be focusing on supporting women. You're a woman. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's really how it started, Warrior Women in Business. The mission has always been to really help women succeed. Women in business struggle. And we're going to talk about that a lot today. We're going to get very real with my amazing guest who, if any of you attended my first brand new conference, was not only a keynote speaker at my conference, but she totally jazzed up everybody with her with their physicality, what she does today, which I'm gonna save and let her talk about it. But it's a really cool experience when you do something with Sonia. Um, so a little bit about Warrior Women in Business and then I'll get into our episode 47 guest today, Sonia Satra. Warrior Women in Business started as really um, an event series and the events were to get women together and bring in female leaders and introduce female leaders to female entrepreneurs not just in business, but everyone knows I'm highly passionate about the arts, but also women in the arts. And now it's culminated into a long-standing podcast series where I get to interview very cool women from executive to women in the mayor's office to, I mean, I, my last episode was with Anne Del Castillo, who is the senior policy director for New York City mayor's office, arts and culture. That was a very cool interview. I've interviewed um, heads of law firms, and now I'm interviewing a star, a keynote speaker, a former soap opera star. She's going to talk about that. Everybody knows I'm not an actress, so I'm going to be <laughs> I'm going to be really asking a lot of questions around that. And then, um, more importantly, is what she's doing today as the CEO of Motorsize, really helping women to transform using um, and and PS or NLS. Sorry, I'm I'm not familiar, and she's going to tell us all about it today but she, um, she's really helping women transform. And since it's a new year, I was like, Sonia, you know what? You should be on my podcast. You've never been on. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. I don't know if I butchered your bio, but that's how I feel about you. <laughs> and uh, for anybody that is online watching us, first of all, thank you. I know everybody's busy. But secondly, if you have a question or a comment, you can put it into the comment feed. We'll get back to you. Or you can just shoot us an email to info at Warrior Women Business. Anything for Sonia, she is nice enough to give us a gift at the end, which I'm taking advantage of. Uh, so you'll be able to get her contact information at the end. But that being said, Sonia, why don't you say hello and just a little bit about, um, you know, your personal goals for 2024. Ooh. Well, it's been an interesting little journey for me this year since I did just publish a book and I've been out on a book tour still um, here in LA doing that. And that's been really fun, but it's also made me kind of look at what I do want to do with all of that. And as I'm winding down the tour, it's also kind of like, oh, okay, now the real work begins. Right? <laughs> the the yes, book isn't the know. end, it's the beginning. Uh, so I'm definitely looking to see how I want to kind of change what I'm doing. Um, 
Yeah, there's I have one big goal that I'm kind of not talking about quite yet, but it's definitely come as a result of this uh, this tour. Um, it's back a little bit in entertainment. And so we'll see where that oh. goes. It's a bit of a long shot, Damn. but um, got to go big, go go big or go home. Right. Um, and then and then I'm also looking to expand uh, Modus Eyes, which is that hybrid of the mindset and movement and bring it into some businesses, because I think there's a lot of. Uh, attention these days on health and well-being and this is a kind of a unique way of offering health and well-being at the same time focusing on really hardcore goals that you really want to achieve within your life or business and so that and ultimately at the end of the year I'm looking to do a retreat as well my first oh, big one. Oh all right well I hope it's somewhere nice I'd like to come. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about modus size. I actually want to start with that, so thanks for uh, mentioning that. So yeah. modus size, you know, it's, it seems to me fitness oriented, right? So I, when I came out of the gate with modus size, I was like, I'm going to revolutionize exercise. Well, oh, that's okay. not happening like that. Mm -hmm. And I think where what I thought was, okay, this is a new way to do exercise because I'm going to guide you through a whole life coaching, really, or coaching process around a goal. Um, and it just seemed like such an effective and uh, useful way of doing everything at one time. And it is. Um, and it has tremendous impact and results. At the same time, I also learned, you know, sometimes fitness people don't really care about the mindset. They just want to do fitness, including myself sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and sometimes if you're doing a sport, like I know you're really into ice hockey or you're doing some other things, you actually have to think about that sport so you can't be thinking about another goal. So it has its time and its place um but so i think of it really now more as a mindset program that uses fitness as a vehicle to really elevate the mindset because it has so many powerful impact on the brain and and your body that helps with the mindset uh so yes you're using fitness but i think it's really a mindset program yeah, absolutely. So uh, thanks for mentioning hockey. So um, <laughs> yes, I've been a hockey player pretty much my whole life. And I'm very actually very involved in the Women's Hockey League. This is a whole nother discussion. But um, you know, yeah, what you know, is so cool about that. I actually did a movie this summer about women's yeah. hockey. Oh my God, why you I, no, I'm going to have to watch it. I think everybody's yes. going to have to see it. Yes. How's that? So what I was going to say is there's definitely this like commonality between sports psychology business motivation, right? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and how it kind oh, of for sure. it, because if you're sitting on the couch and you're and you're struggling, that's not and you're looking down, that's not gonna help you. You have to get modicized. Look, I just made that up. <laughs> you know, you, you do get, you have to get going. So yes. so um and there's a lot of places that you could go, right? So how yeah. do you stay how do you first I know we're going off of we're not going anywhere on the questions that I sent, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, so, so first of all, how do you, how, so if let's say you're a woman, it's a new year, you're an entrepreneur, or maybe like a lot of my clients are female executives that are looking to like change businesses or they're looking for a higher salary mm -hmm. or maybe even they're fearful and want to yeah. start a new business. So how do you, how do they, in your opinion, how do they best choose a goal? Because when we talk about sports and hitting goals, you have to have a, you you have to be focused. So yeah. how do they how do you find that they are best in a best mental state to yeah. choose the goal and then how does the mental state continue so they can reach that goal? Mm, no, it's a good uh, I love the articulation that you said to be in the right state because I think that's really important when we make a decision from a fearful or confused or uh, wishy-washy kind of place, it's not our most resourceful state and it's not necessarily going to give you the best answer or the one that you're going to stick to the most. So uh, I know in my coaching, my regular coaching, I, I do this perspective exercise and it's really all about that because when you're in a sort of empowered state, the things that come up are just brilliant and they're the most aligned and the ones that you'll probably stick with and the most uh, true to who you really are. So that is really important. That is one of the things that modus size can also do because when you're moving, it does elevate your energy. It taps your your mood, your it reduces your anxiety, it increases, you know, the good feeling chemicals yeah. in your body. It there's a chemical released in your brain that 
creates neurogenesis and new nerve cells and new neural pathways and uh, you're more focused, more creative, more uh, motivated. Actually, it taps the motivation part of your brain. And so utilizing movement to shift your state and then making a decision from that place, I think, is a really, really powerful way. But either way, you need to come from a powerful state. And, you know, the title of the book, I'm just going to throw it out there just because no, no, fine. It, we're going to get to it. Go for it. I'm not. But I think it's actually the reason it is the title of the book is because well, I'll, there's a story behind that that might be worth telling right now, actually. But yeah. is the title is What If It Were Easy? And it's because that question isn't about is it easy, like choosing the easy, not, like everything worthwhile is going to have its challenges. So it's not a Pollyanna, easy, easy, easy. But if you ask the question, what if it were easy? What would you do? That sort of question. help. It would make right. It easier. <laughs> well, no intended. <laughs> but it's also less about the easy. What if it were easy is really like opening up your heart state, that possibility yeah. of what would you do if it were easy? And it's so interesting because I have people come to me with like, I want to do this, this, and this, and this. And then I'll ask that question, what if it were easy, what would you do? And they give me an answer that's completely different. <laughs> right, because they're not trying to figure out the solution so much, right? It gets And because maybe? it gets to their heart. It gets oh, to the heart and soul of what they really want. So when you ask the question of how do people get focused or how do people do it, it might be a great starting point to ask the question. And I sometimes say it takes asking the question twice because the first time you're in your head, you're like, but it's not, you know, but the second time you're like, all right, let me sit in this. Let me like settle into the question. Well, if it were easy, I would do this. And 9.9 .9 times out of 10, that's probably the thing that you should go do. Um, and I, I so the, it came from actually a story with my husband because he used to um, have what they call a first look deal in entertainment. So he's basically paid to come up with ideas for shows. And we had just had our daughter. We were living in New York and the company was in L.A. and they were like wanted him to fly out. And we, you know, assumed they were going to renew his contract. And so we were going to go have a celebration. And I'm sitting in the car with the brand new baby and he comes out and he looks white as a ghost. And I was like, what happened? And he's like, I was fired. And we're yeah. like, oh, crap. And so yeah. then it was like, well, all right. When then he started to panic, he's like, what are we going to do? We got a new baby. We got New York. Uh, like everything in this business is impossible. And I was like, yeah. well, somebody's made it. It's not impossible. And he's just... He's like, no, what, how are, you know, we're trying to come up with ideas and nothing is landing. And he's just like, he was obsessed with making a million dollars as if that was going to set us free. But he was like, oh, if I got, nobody can make a million dollars in this business. <laughs> I was like, well, somebody has. And uh, continuing down that path. And finally, I was just like, well, whatever, we're easy. You know, my little coaching brain is like, say something. And he's just like, but it's not. I'm like, yeah, but what if it were easy? What would you do? And He's like, I don't know, I guess if it were easy, I would start my own company. Mm -hmm. And that was never one of the ideas that had been laid out on the table ever. And so I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, I probably would do that. And he's like, I know all these people and I got these ideas anyway, I probably could do it. I was like, well, why don't you? So the next day he called up a friend, they started a company and a year oh. later, he made a million dollars. Oh, this is a great story. I love it. <laughs> it is. And so I always say it's the million dollar story, but it really and it truly, really is, actually. it is because it was what he really wanted, but was too afraid, had all these other things that he should do. And I think that that's what's so key and so important. Will there be fear? Will there be challenges? Sure. Okay. And that's like another step. But the first step of really deciding is getting to your heart. What is it that you really want? Yeah, I love that. And it seems like you can make it, it's, it comes to not, not that it wasn't already there, but it seems like it breaks a barrier. Yes, to me. it does. It breaks the barrier because when you're struggling and you're, you're focused in on the struggle and decision points and you're not able to make that decision, it seems to strip that down, which is, which is wonderful. You know, I exactly. That, that's what it comes down to. And I'm just being very real. No, myself. totally. And to go yeah. back to your original statement of you got to do it from a positive or from a different state, yeah. that question changes your state because you get out of the struggle and then you're in a different state of mind. And that's what is part of what sets you free. Okay. I mean, I just, I can't wait to uh, 
take advantage of your free offer, but we're going to go through some questions. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's talk about um, now with Warrior Women. Like I said, I think at this point, like half of my audience actually are actors, obviously musicians like me, uh, yeah. film directors, creative people, or they want to tap into their creative side. Yeah. Definitely. And some want to make a career out of it. And that's why I speak at the industry, entertainment industry conferences. And I'm so involved with that. So talk to us about, if you don't mind, just a little bit about your yeah. background in acting or your current state in acting, because I don't know much. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and what what that's what is that, first of all, why did you choose it? What has that been like for you? And how have you been able to continually succeed in, I would think, a very tough industry? Yeah, well, I, it was a bit of a random thing. I mean, my how I got into it, I, it was not like, oh, I was the child actor person at all. My whole family is super intellectuals. My mom's a professor. My oldest oh. sister was a doctor. The other one was in engineering school. And I was like, hey, I'm going to go be an actress. <laughs> <It was like, laughs> did not have a whole lot of contacts in that world. Um, but I had done this like hair ad. This guy had watched, had seen me play tennis with my mom. It was at a local park. And he's like, hey, would you like to do this hair ad for this little uh, hairdresser in Montclair, New Jersey? And uh, I was, <laughs> I know. And I, you know, I was like 16. I'm like, sure, free hair product. I'll do it why not yeah. it's fun and I had I really loved it It was so so much fun and then I went to school and went to college and I was you know broke college girl so I was looking for cash and I was working in the dining hall and then I was like well maybe I can make some money modeling and so I literally at the time you know it was pre-internet and so I right. looked in the New York Times help wanted and models not a good place to look for model ads but anyway yeah. every scam in the book <laughs> and i ended up at one of them but my mom thankfully would humor my little whims <laughs> so she, we went to one thing. and you know it was like give us ten thousand dollars we'll make you a star and i was like oh, i didn't have that anyway but um mm, right. i ended up through a friend of a friend of a friend um at an agency that was a commercial agency i was still thinking modeling i was there with my little like portfolio and uh they had me read some little pizza hut scripts and uh they liked apparently what i did and so they started to send me out on commercials and i i just had that beginner's luck really i was the perfect counter girl queen look and so i just hit like a time with something that i could do well and i booked a lot of that i did burger king mcdonald's really? pizza hut wendy's <laughs> burger heaven wow, like all of them any of this. <laughs> I, I love this story <laughs> and uh, and that was really where it started because i was like you know oh this is cool maybe this is something i could do and right. so I was at Rutgers in New Brunswick, and they had actually a very good acting program. I wasn't a theater major, but I was able to take some of their acting classes. Bill Esper, very well known. And uh, and then I started. And again, ironically, I ended up, the agency sent me out on a what they call a theatrical or a legit audition. And the very first one was Guiding Light. Wow. And I screen tested. I did not get it. But that was that was like the second sort of wait a second. Maybe I really should think about this. Like I got so far yeah. right away, which is kind of sometimes a double edged sword because I was like, hey, this isn't so bad. I could do this, you know, yeah. and then I moved to L.A. and I realized, oh, this is really hard. Yeah. Um, and but that was what really prompted um my sister lived in LA and I came out for summer vacation and thought you know what this is what I want this is where I need to be and I need to just give it a shot like at that point I thought somebody's made it why couldn't I and so came back drove cross country in my little beat up Honda Accord and I started the whole like get a waitressing job and you know pounding pavement that's the way to go. So as you in that in that industry, um, where have you found support, especially with women? Is there is there female support? Are, are there associations? Do you have mentors? So, Towards you know, I mean, this was a long time ago, you know, it was quite a number of years ago. And so the whole women supporting women or it was way pre, you know, hashtag me to mm -hmm. movement. Uh -huh. So it was a man's world and it was not a pretty one. I'm not going to lie. It I'm was, sure. there was, and you know, that was very 
prevalent um, in terms yeah. of like, I hit up against that kind of a lot. Um, so no, I, I wouldn't actually say I had a couple of good guy friends and those were pr at the time, thankfully, mm -hmm. because they were able to kind of give me a little perspective of the, the men's perspective, you know, and yeah, be like, okay. no, this guy's really a jerk. Like you're right. And not everybody's that way. And so I was really grateful for the, them in my life, but I wish we ha I had some really strong women's support back then. I, I mean, I think it's great that it's starting finally to really pick up because I think it's so necessary. We have to, we have to share, we have to be honest, we have to help yeah. each other. And I think men do that quite well, actually. And uh, um, we've been a little bit slower on the uptake but we're getting there, and I think that's good. Yeah, I do too. I've had quite a few uh, women on my podcast, I don't know if you've seen, that are in men's yeah. industries. I had a woman that's the CEO of a eSports motorcycle, very cool yes. organization. Yeah. I had the um, one of the founders of the LBGA on my podcast like two episodes ago. And it's, what I love about interviewing people like you and them is that like, I think without even knowing it, you are role models you know, yeah. to women in these industries just by the nature of where you've, where you've gone. And I, yeah. like you said, it's like, it is, I feel like it's a little bit of our duty to help and give back and it, and it can be a part of everything that we do. And certainly you're doing that today. So I, I yeah. think that that's, um, that, you know, to the time has come, but leveraging what you've done in a way, mm -hmm. and just sharing your story is just very helpful, you know? Yeah. I'm impressed, though, with some of the younger women, like my daughter. And, and actually, this movie that I just did, um, I was the I was a mom in this one, and the, the girl it was at uh, Gretzky's office. Okay, I, that is crazy. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we could talk hockey, but we don't have time for it today. We, I know, but she, but, and actually I was just, I was just out with her last night and uh, she's young, but she's just got such a different head on her shoulders. Like I, I, I really, I almost feel like some of our generation can learn as much from the younger generation of women, you know, because they're, they're really, there's, I think it's important important for the communication because we learn things that they don't know and that that can really help them and be role models but I also think that they have grown up in a different world and they Very have a perspective yeah. that we can learn from too so I really I I love like hanging out with her and and I I feel optimistic actually when I when I hang out with her or even my my daughter who's a little younger but um they they're they're seeing things differently and i and i think they're understanding things differently they don't have the same sort of um traps perhaps that we did because a lot of us broke through those barriers right That's we right. made it yeah, possible exactly right it's exactly right right so they yes. don't see yeah. that that are the obstacles because they don't exist in the same way like even my mom broke through barriers so that i could have what i have today so we're all making change and that's um, just such an amazing thing. Um, but I, I do think it's important for the conversations to go both ways for us to them and them to us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about kind of one of the meats of this interview, which is about <laughs> 2024 women looking to make changes, or maybe mm -hmm. they've been looking to make a change for a while mm -hmm. and they've been stuck, or maybe they started a new direction. I know a lot of them. That's why I'm saying that. Absolutely. Or they started going in a new direction and it possibly wasn't the right direction. So mm -hmm. women in business, and I'm talking about primarily with warrior women in business, female entrepreneurs, but there's also yeah. female executives that are struggling to make decisions, right? Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about where you've seen women that struggle break through. Um, if you have any examples, no names, but if you have any examples would be great. And, and what they've done on their own to do that, um, maybe how you've guided them, a little bit about that would be very helpful. 
Mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting time because I've seen so many women really looking to make major changes. And it's actually exciting because I do feel like many of them are trying to find um, more creative ways and to tap into that. And I think that's um, also a really great thing for the future because I think we need to tap into that femininity, that creativity, and that peace is our strength. And so um, I'm excited about that for the future. But um, I, I mean, I, I see women make breakthroughs in terms of, of what they want to do. Um, I've had a businesswoman who just is recently shifting and going into writing, like that's a passion. And it really did come from a lot of the perspective work we did, some of the modicized work that we did, asking the question, what if it were easy? And um, and looking at what what you really have, you know, I think that's a, a question that's actually part of the modicized process, but that we don't often look at. We always look at what we don't have. Yeah. And again, it shifts us into that mindset of the challenge as opposed to what we have. Yeah. And so when you look at what you have, especially some of these executives coming out, you know, that are wanting to make a change. Oh my gosh, it's mind boggling what they have in oh, terms I, of, I agree. right? <laughs> the talent, the creativity, the like the go-getteredness, you know, the, the stories. Uh, the stories, the, stories, the experience. I mean, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And so, and they don't even see it. It's just as if that doesn't exist and they're not necessarily using it. And so I think that's one of the most important things. And you know what? I see that with moms too, because I will also coach people, mothers who are looking to get into something or to start businesses or to have like a part right. two in their life after motherhood. And it's very similar because it's like running a business to run a family and they just totally discount all of those talents that they already have and yeah. they've developed plus everything else that they've got in in um, their life experience so what do you have and and really go deep on that question it's funny last night i was doing a book event and i i, I sort of ended up coaching somebody live and i was like what do you have and and it was a gentleman but he was like well i have this but then blah 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 and he started immediately to go into all the reasons why he couldn't do it and i was right, like see of course. this yeah, is no, what we do it's so common isn't it it's so it was common like, he got Funny. through one thing of what he had before he shifted. And that's what I see all the time. <laughs> I did. Like, stop. I mean, I would. Stop. Right. That wasn't the question. What do you have? Right. <laughs> so. It's good to listen. <laughs> no, it's so true. And no, so. No, but I love that. I, I think that goes for everybody. I mean, just li listening. I mean, every time I, every time I work individually with executives yeah. or just whomever, an artist, yes. you know, it's like they need to listen. I think a lot of the failure comes about from just simply not listening. You know, listen mm. to what, what, listen to what's good. Like when someone tells you, oh, you know, it's so refreshing to hear the things that you've done and you have from other people, but too many people will take that and then just go back to that benchmark and say, oh, but I don't have this or, but I'm still here. So I think that, right. especially these, like you said, these executive women, They've done so much. So much, so, so much. much. They're and just... I think the barrier a lot of times, that's why I see maybe one in 10 really succeeding, just my experience, really succeeding is because they are kind of a, sometimes afraid to let go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Let go of a stability. So like on my own whiteboard, I have my own goals. Stability is one, but then, you know, Having global impact is the second one. And I think, and I'm not kidding. And I think that they can go together. If you, oh, yes. Right? Yes, I think I, I was do. telling this woman the other day, I said, um, it was a very weird conversation, but I said, it all goes back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And she's like, you know what? You're right. Yeah. Because if you have a, you can have a baseline, but you can reach to the top and too many people are afraid to leave the, that baseline. And well, you know, they right? say like sort of above Maslow's knees are certainty or that security, stability, yeah. right. variety, um, love and contribution and significance. And then or not love, love and love and connection. Sorry. Right. Um, significance. And then the higher even above that is growth and contribution. 
And that's and the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. That's if my we goal. can if we can live in those two buckets. Agreed. A lot of the rest gets but a lot of us get stuck and it was interesting because when I first sort of looked at it in that through that lens and this was actually back in my acting day, I was stuck in a significant um, certainty loop. And I was like, oh, I don't care about certainty. And I was like, oh, yes, I did. Yeah, you and did. Uh, no, and so I wanted though, certainty. You that about yourself. I I've been there too. I understand. Yeah, certainty and significance. Mm -hmm. And those yeah. two don't match at all. Talk about like a setup for just like craziness, <laughs> right? Because yeah. who are significance is completely dependent on what other people think of you. Well, there's no certainty in that. That's for sure. That's <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and I would loop in that mindset. And wow, that was an eye opener. And so once you start to see that, which bucket of those and, and when we're in and we need all of them. So it's not like, oh, I don't right. need any of it. Of course, Absolutely. we need a little bit of all of it. Yeah. But if you can start to reach to shift your mindset into growth or contribution, you will be a much uh, happier and in my opinion, ultimately more successful person. Yeah, absolutely. And but yes, the certainty is fear. That's what keeps us like stuck. Yeah, I mean. And there is no certain, there's very little certainty in the world, especially today, even in those quote unquote safe jobs. Right, that's true. You never know, you literally you never know what's around the corner. Like last night I put on the news I really don't like watching the news. Yeah. <laughs> it's generally depressing. <laughs> so, but I have to stay, know what's going on in life. Right. And I saw, oh, well, you know, the where the polls are and what's happening. And I was thinking, yes. okay, is that really going to affect me? And where's, it's always uncertain. So I'm yes. not going to look to that to be certain. I'm going right. to do what I can. Yes, exactly. In, my, in myself, in my community, in the people that I know, that's where I'm going to focus. Maybe that'll proliferate to a higher level, but maybe it won't. And I think um, being okay with that is also important when you're a woman in business, because, you know, something like 70% of the, of the, uh, something, uh, see, I had a meeting yesterday with a client in North Carolina, and mm -hmm. I sat with the CEO and he said, did you know that like 70% of the business is small business owners? I said, of course I do. I talk about this stuff every day and we just start talking and he's like, it's so uncertain. I said, I know it is. I said, but you know, right. these are risks we have to take. It so, is, it is. You know, and uh, was I reading a quote the other day about um, oh, the guy Facebook, just the owner of Facebook, but he was just like, <laughs> you guy, know, in the sense, that, that guy. guy, that guy, um, was it like we're in such an uncertain world? He's just like the greater, you know, the the worst thing you can do is to not take a risk. Like that's the most uncertain thing you could do is to not take a chance. And I think there's really a lot of truth to that right now. So it does require a bit of boldness and uh, trusting. A lot of boldness. And with that, and in order to have that, I think it takes support. You need the support. You need that somewhere. accountability somewhere. You need somewhere. somebody to help put you back in that right perspective when you go awry. Because we all do. We all do. Yeah. No, I agree. And uh, it, it's true. It's support. And however you can get that support. So, yeah, exactly. I, think, I think taking away from this, like, 2024, you know, embracing the uncertainty but finding yes. this, finding the support, and I love what you talked about in terms of the growth and significance, and yeah. like see how it lights me up because it it really does, because <laughs> I think that's our purpose, you know. And I think it's not I'm not unique, you know. I think most people think that way; they just don't go for it, <laughs> you know. Right. Well, it's growth and contribution. Those are the two. The significance. Again, we all need some, but you if we're too heavily in that area or too heavily in like that's what's driving us, yeah. the significance can get us into trouble because it 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 uh, puts us in a place where we lose our own power. We're not in ourselves because it's very much dependent on other people. Contribution, you're totally in control. You're the driver of that. Like you can yeah, contribute and, and you can grow. <laughs> I think the measurement, I mean, I'm a marketing person, but this is more emotional. I think the I think that the measurement is very much energetic, and I that's why I like what you're doing with motorcycles, right? Because you know, when you're exhausted and you're trying to do something in your business, yeah, or your career, and you're you keep doing something, you go in this you know rat loop, or I'm sorry, mouse loop. Yes, Maybe, <laughs> so I'm thinking about rats, but mouse loop. <laughs> We're in New York City, of course. <laughs> right. We think about rats. <laughs> yeah, think about rats, but there's nothing wrong with rats. But anyway, so the mouse loop, and you know, you yeah. keep kind of hitting this wall. 
I think that that is something that, you know, you have to kind of stop at some point and say, okay, this is robbing my energy. So what can I do? To yeah. Restart, build the energy in the right direction. So there's so many things that you can do. <laughs> energy is a really, I, I'm so glad you brought that up because the energy is, and this is something I've been thinking a lot about lately for myself because energy is, is really a commodity. It's like money, right? Absolutely. And what we do with it is, is going, could make or break us. And so you wouldn't just throw money in the toilet, right? And yet there are times when we just throw our energy away and we waste it on things that are not producing anything. So being really mindful of the energy that where you're directing your energy and the kind of energy that you put out. That's another, oh, this is kind of cool. I do, I, I, I just want to share this. Go ahead. <laughs> so this is I'm something with energy. <laughs> No, because now that they can now they can measure our 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 energies and and in very scientific experiments they can isolate it. So if you take like the molecule or the atom of say uh the frequency of of different moods, so like happiness or love or anger or depression or something like that, and you could put those and they can now into like a goblet, and then they would ring a pitchfork it would connect the frequency would connect to whatever the pitch like the pitchfork was happy it would connect to the goblet of happiness and it would create the frequency of that atom to move so quickly that that goblet will actually break it's that powerful wow. it's but none of the others will be impacted by it at all wow. and so that's the power of our energy so we really want to be mindful of what we're putting out and how that will like literally like magnify and then come back to us and so being mindful of what we do with our energy and the energy that we're putting out in the world i think is so key too yeah so how do we so it says say you say you have low low energy Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you have low energy because again, you're struggling or maybe you can't make a decision or things just aren't working out or the train is delayed. The flight is delayed. There's, I mean, everything that's happened to me in the last 24 hours, right. Right. I'm getting sick. The flights were delayed. All these, right. So it's like, I could have said, you know what? I'm just going to stay in bed. I'm not right. Do nothing. I'm doing nothing. You yeah. Know? So how do you kind of, when you do your coaching around energy manipulation or use, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you help women like with the bounce back effect yeah. or maintain or keeping up the energy when things are just really, everything's against them? Yeah. So a couple of things. One, you feel what you focus on. So if you're feeling crappy, you're probably focusing on something that's creating that. So, mm -hmm. um, being very mindful of what you're focusing on and finding ways to shift your focus. But I also find that, again, it's one of the reasons why I really like movement mm -hmm. because that automatically changes your energy. It basically does it for you. And so I get, if you're like sitting on the couch depressed, you know, going to the gym may feel like zero to a hundred. It might just feel too much, but yeah. maybe you could walk around the block. You know what I mean? Like what's something small? <laughs> yeah. I that will move you. <laughs> right. Move you forward. Just and take so a walk. Yeah. just take a walk will yeah. already shift your energy or, you know, I, you're a musician, right? Listening to music can change our energy. 100%. Yeah. Singing a song, even if you're a horrible singer, can, it changes your energy. There's a reason religions use all like all around the world use that. And, 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 and it's, it, there's, it has a power, a resonance sound, um, meditation, writing. So doing something that will help you shift your focus and shift your energy first. And from there, then what's one action you can take? Ah, uh, that's really smart. Because I love that. Because when you're running a business like mm -hmm. we are, yeah, and you could just spend twenty four hours a day on the business. I yes. mean, in my my experience, very easily, yes, <laughs> and still not easily, have done it. <laughs> billions of ideas. It's very easy. Yeah. So I I love your advice. Is that mm -hmm. okay? You could be just focusing on the business, have your head down on the computer, blah blah blah. But if that's not giving you the energy you need, take the time to give something that gives you that positive energy back. And that could yes. help 
the yes. situation. And also, to your point earlier, I think you were talking about clarification, right? Yes. So helping to clarify. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I think uh, I, I think doing it in an authentic way too, right? Not not doing yeah. something that you hate physically or creatively. Absolutely. But something that you can you can you enjoy. I, I, I agree. I agree. Um, and people ask me that all the time. Well, what kind of exercise or what kind of thing? You know, it's like, like anything do you you'll like. do, right? Do yeah. what you like. And there's probably something out there that you like, you know, enough. <laughs> and walking is probably one of them. Yeah. Um, but like, or music, you know, put on, a, put on a song you love, right? Everybody can find something that they love, but that's a really key thing. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk, now let's talk about your book, because we haven't really talked about it. I know that we were talking a lot about your book, but I actually just wanted to get in your brain. <laughs> yeah, talk. no, this about, is like, great. I mean, I love, if you haven't noticed, I love psychology. Yes. So I, I personally <laughs> think, I've said since the beginning of my time, is that business is psychology, relationships are psychology. Mm. So we start talking about psychology, I'm just going to go off. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really, so true, it's though. It's a subject for me. But anyway, yeah. um, let's talk about your book, like, what if it were easy, right? I love the title and I love how you explained it too. And with your husband, I mean, I know. she's so good. Uh, <laughs> but can you share a couple of bits of, let's just like share from the book, a little bit of what you think some highlights are from the book, advice that you give or stories that you gave in the book, just so people can like whet their appetite about the book. Yeah. So, um, so the first half of the book is a, a seven step process and some of what, you know, it's sort of choosing the goal, maybe what if it were easy to open that the channels for you and then it's a series of questions and the idea is to do it to movement of some kind. In the book I have each mindset tied to one exercise, you know, in my okay. classes, I'll, I'll put them together, but this gives you a flavor, a taste of what it is. Um, and there's a QR code that will take you to a video. So it's really easy to, to try it and to do it. Um, and so that's the first half of the book. And then the second half is, um, and you'll, as superwoman, warrior woman, uh, <laughs> is what I call the superpowers that you also need to tap into in order to achieve any kind of goal, whether it be love or business. And that one I, I use more as an on on an as need basis, because depending upon where you're at in the goal, you might need different things. Sometimes yeah. you need more creativity. Sometimes you need to be more daring. Sometimes you need more patience, you know? And so, yes. yes. Um, and <laughs> so those each also have a sort of a how to and, um, and a movement and a mindset to help go along with it. So that's the structure of the book. And, um, Oh gosh, there's so so many client stories about it um, that are in there that I'm trying to think of which ones are. I mean, there's one. This one's more of a weight loss. I'll share one weight loss, one business. But this one was a woman who was morbidly obese and um, really couldn't exercise. Um, but she started to get into this. Uh, she was intrigued by the mindset piece and the and the thing, and she just she started to do a little bit of walking and instead of eating she would start to do the mindset combined with a little bit of walking and um that led her closer and closer to deciding that she was going to really like lose this weight she had come from an abusive relationship she left mm. the abusive relationship she mm. got out of that and i'm so proud to say today she has lost over 300 pounds what? 300 yes. pounds 300 pounds what? and that's, that's insane honest i'm sorry but it's great i know it's wow. a lot and she will say and she started to I mean, create she saved her life i gotta be honest well, with you because you can't I... be you can't be that obese like you can't and she doctors. knew it so when you tell me 300 pounds i'm like oh my god like heart failure you know absolutely and she had two children and she was like i need to be alive for these kids yeah, like i have to do health. something wow and but it you know she was dealing with her own demons and so it was a lot and so mm -hmm. and i remember the first day she's like i get this moda size thing now she's like it's amazing and and then she ended up sort of graduating from she loved the water it was a sort of a good place for her and she ended yeah. up doing swimming and so she created her own little moda size in the pool of like 
like, you know, I'd just swim one lap and I'd like what things I wanted to pull in. And the other one was what I wanted to kick out, you know, Hey, <laughs> and that's so pretty cool. <laughs> it was I like really that. cool. It was yeah. great. And so she started to incorporate it into all aspects of her life. So she's really doing amazingly well. Um, and then there was another story of a, of a guy who was actually looking, he was struggling, um, with his business. And part of it was because he wasn't being honest with where he was really at. And he was just kind of spending yeah. and spending and spending and digging himself deeper into yeah. a hole. Nothing. And right. And I think many of us have been there at some yeah. point or <laughs> at least. Stop spending. Yeah. Stop spending. Yes, I <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. And he, he really needed to take a good, honest look at what he was going to do. And he was uh, going to, he was looking into either getting financing or potentially trying to figure out how he could change things and sell or like, yep. what was he going to do? Um, but he was also, he created the company. So he was really, you know, attached to the way things were and his product and, you know, his uh, quality. And he didn't want it to just like, he didn't want to give that up just in exchange for money. And so um, through sort of a motorized process, was when he became honest about what was really happening. It was through all of that. And he came in and he's like, I'm realizing I'm not being honest about what's going on. And so oh, wow. that helped us to get real. And then he had actually had a client who loved the product who um, was interested in investing at one point. Um, and so he ended up having a conversation. And in the end, there was lots of steps that got to that, but in the end, he ended up bringing him on as an investor. And so, wow. uh, yeah, it was a very, and it was a really great partnership, it's still going strong. So um, lots of things that can come up with that. Um, yeah. And other ones that were more around relationships and figuring out things that were going on in relationships and what parts they were playing in it and and how to work through really difficult situations and and working through that and and solving those so i really believe that this mindset process and again changing your state in modus size it's through movement can really it's just such a powerful way to to open up possibility and what i really believe is it gets you aligned and this was something I was actually saying that last night. I really believe in the whole mind, body, energy, or heart space of yeah. things. And very often, one or two are in the right place, but the other isn't. Mm. And I, I noticed that in when I was going through a really tough time in acting. I wanted this sort of goal, but I was embodying like total failure. And you could mm. see it. You could feel it the second I walked into a room. And I didn't work during that time. It's actually yeah. how I started. I did modus eyes before I ever even knew it, but that was when I realized, oh my gosh, like I'm creating this. Yeah. And that, and I decided I was gonna run and do all this mindset stuff and, and really change. And it did like very powerfully. So that was the first time I ever used this idea. Um, but I think what's important is to align the three because when all three are in alignment, powerful things can happen and they can happen quickly. I've had people walk out of a room and get a client. <laughs> I actually, a friend of mine, it was so funny for, he's like, I just got your book and I started to do it on a chapter one and I just booked a movie. <laughs> he's like, wow. this stuff works. <laughs> you know? Jeez, so, that's your best testimonial right there. <laughs> I, it, and I, but I, and I really believe it's because of that alignment. And I think that's where we sometimes get ourselves into trouble. And that's oh, why I, I think embodying the mindset is equally as important as just thinking it. And yeah, that's what course. we're of, sort of, of trained course. to do. Let's just sit and listen and talk through it. Yeah, you but have we, to do something with it. Yeah, you're super physical. You know that. I and know. So, it's like you got to. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, and I like, I, I mean, I, I love these stories. I honestly can't wait to read the book, but um, oh. I want to sign copy. But anyway, so, <laughs> so no, but you know, I love what you're saying about relationships because at the end of the day, what it sounds like and what is true, right. Is that it's mm -hmm. relationships, not just with other people, but yourself. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's relationship with yourself. It seems yes. like, especially if you're 
a solopreneur or an artist and you're, you know, it's like, how do yes. I make these decisions? And then when you come into another relationship, if you're not certain, like you said, I love what you said about alignment, because then you may think, oh, I got this and I want this. But if you're misaligned, it's not going right. to work. And that's it's not going to work as well. And I like what I don't right. want is we to create like a paranoia where you're just like, oh, my God, everything I do is going to be messed up. It's no, no, not. No, I'm but... just saying that's interesting that you say that because it, it yes. seems it, you, yeah, you could tread along. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, like I've had clients that, oh, I want to go from, you know, like these companies, I want to go from five to ten million dollars, which is usually it or ten to twenty or whatever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they're just staying at five or they're staying at six or they're staying at seven. It's probably because exactly okay. that like it is something is out right something's not working you're working but you're not like at high velocity <laughs> right or you're working with that doing the same things that you did that got you to that five million but there's a different probably energetic frequency mindset action that takes place in order to achieve that next level and that's the piece that needs to level up in, in its entirety. You know, you might not like have the goal of wanting it, but if you're not sure. embodying it and energetically doing it, then it's then that's when I find it, it can either, you know, sort of flatline or you'll like maybe have a hit and then it will come back because it's it's you haven't like kind of made that energetic growth yet. So let me ask you this question that's important, right? So I have found in my work that a lot, I mean, I'm in marketing, nobody has a budget <laughs> magically. <laughs> right. It's a magical right. thing. It's ethereal. Do you have a budget? I don't know. Yes, you do. <laughs> right. So anyway, but my point is that all comes from fear, right? Because yes. who wants to spend money? Like nobody. So, but my question is what I have found that works in, in marketing is you try something, mm -hmm. it works. Oh, now I can try more, right? Yes. I'm being very simplistic about this, like kindergarten. But it's true. But I'm wondering how that how that works with your clients. Like, I'm assuming that change can be fearful, right? Yes. So how do they, like, especially the woman who lost 300 pounds, it's amazing, right? Yeah. So in her case, for example, how did she approach initial change to be able to swim and, you know, get to that level? <laughs> It was, it was all small steps, all yeah. tiny, tiny steps, you know, for her, she actually started with just doing, and I would say just, it's actually a big move, but uh, a gratitude journal, because suddenly oh. she got to from the place of like, oh, there are actually things that are good in my life, right? Looking so at what do you have? You realize that if you're in that space, yeah. When you're in that space, and she was, she'd been literally beaten, you know, and yeah. physically, mentally, emotionally. And so to get to a place where like you can find some level of agency again and yeah. find something to be grateful for was a, that was a huge first step. And so, and then it was like, okay, what's the next step? And what's the next step? And, and that will give you the evidence, as you're saying, that right. you're okay and you can do it and we all can do it. Um, so I'm a huge, you know, it's funny. I actually am a big believer in, in small steps. And I think many times when we're making big change, uh, we need to do that. But I do want to put this out there because I think you have, you're one of, I think you're one of these people. <laughs> And you probably have that in your audience. There are also some people who respond to big steps. They're excited about yeah, like, like a things. giant step, right? <laughs> like yeah. the little step almost feels like, ugh, you know what I mean? And the yeah, energy that's why I is can never put together anything from Ikea. I'm like, is it built yet? I'm leaving the room. <laughs> it's just horrible. So no. <laughs> but that's exactly right. And so... <laughs> And so sometimes that those little steps don't feel, they don't feel exciting. So your energy isn't as into it. And so Amen. sometimes <laughs> for those kinds of people, they yeah. respond better to something big and bold and like, no, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Will there be a series of small steps to get there? Probably yes. But the, the mindset is I'm taking this big leap. And so knowing who you are on that spectrum and where you are on any given project is also because sometimes you can flip flop i think we tend to have personalities that skew one way or another but there mm -hmm. i tend to be a little more of the bigger boulder sounds more exciting so i'm more into it 
but there are some things that I know, like, just take a first step, just take a first step. Right. Um, so, so making that distinction and choosing accordingly is important. So how do you tackle these little steps? This is actually really important that you bring this up. How do you tackle the little steps that you have to do, especially business owners that let's say can't have a big staff of people, right? They have to, when people have a staff and I come in and I'm a marketing consultant and they say, I don't want to let this get task go. I'm like, are you insane? You actually right. have people and we always show right. about it. But let's say, <laughs> let's right. say you can't and you have to do the little things to make your business run, make the engine go mm-hmm. and you, and it's draining your energy. Yeah. What's your approach to that? Because there's a lot of people that get stuck in that cycle. Yeah, they are. Uh, and, and I have gotten stuck in that cycle. Because <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's to some extent, if you can't get somebody, the more the sooner you can get somebody to unload some of that stuff, the better off you are. <laughs> so I remember the first time I hired an assistant and I was like, what do I do with an assistant? My husband was like, just give her everything that you don't want to do. And I was like, I love that answer. Okay. <laughs> and so I literally was like, could you do, I gave her everything. And then I came back to my desk and I was like, now what do I do? <laughs> I mean, I'll just sit here I, here. <laughs> seriously, like I was so programmed to do all so of that funny. stuff. I wasn't doing the higher level stuff. And it's so much so that I couldn't even think about it. That's so funny. <laughs> I got over that pretty quickly, but. Yeah, um big time. <laughs> But it, so yes, the sooner you can find a way to unload some of it, the freer you will be. So you need to calibrate that a little bit. Um, and then for me, what works best, and I've I've found this to work pretty well for other people too, is to, you know, cluster it, right? So you do a cluster of that stuff and then really, and I, I always, again, try to move or separate the time to shift the energy into, mm-hmm. okay, this is going to be a bit of a creative time, or now I'm going to do the higher level activities that I also have to do to keep this going and, and growing. Um, and then, you know, I might need to come back and do another cluster of the busy work stuff. Um, but that's how I've sort of separated it, but making okay. sure you separate to, to go in alignment with what we've been talking so much about changing the energy and the 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 um state of your physical and uh, emotional well-being when you start that next thing is important yeah. and i think if you chunk the sort of, sort of the busy stuff and it might be a large chunk you know but chunking it sort of helps to just like all right i'm just gonna turn through this now and then i'm gonna take a break i'm gonna go yeah. walk around the block or do something sing a song go dance in my living room you know? <laughs> yes, yes, then i'll it. come back <laughs> and i'm gonna be i'm gonna have this period of time to just create yeah and i think for women it's really movement is so important flow is so important women you know need to move <laughs> we are we actually all do we all we do really... but i'm just thinking like i'm thinking women especially yeah. like with the dance like just because you brought up dancing yeah <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah such, because um that goes all the way back to you know the femininity and being feminine and expressing that and embodying like you said the energy and not just thinking or listening to it we're in a very thinking society and i think you know, Zoom has opened up lots of opportunities, but at the same time, it has made us so much yeah. more sedentary. Oh my God. It's unbelievable. Uh, I know. Un- I, I'm all about in real life. So, absolutely. And I mean, I, I sit out and there are days I'm like, holy crap, I've been sitting for hours in front of a screen. Like, I have to move and I'll get people up and moving within something. But, yeah, you course. know, it's even so it's like you, you still like you do need to physically move. Yes, 100 percent. So I know we only have a few minutes left. So a couple of things I wanted to ask you. Yeah. The question I ask all and I'm sure I haven't gotten to all the questions, but um, <laughs> so we I cover ask, lots of good stuff. So <laughs> well, we did. We talked about psychology, business. I mean, so many good things. And yeah. thank you so much for sharing um, the oh, examples gosh. that you gave, the advice. I think it's re- what you're saying is really important for people, and I hope that they take it and do something with it. 
I'm very action yeah. oriented. So I love that. And you do like because I'm all about manifesting, but you got to get out. You can't you just, just manifest like, in a closet. Oh, I, know, I have a client said, Jasmine just manifested. I'm like, okay, I've been sitting here for a while. So I'm going to go do something. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Nothing against him. I mean, good for him. No, no, no. I mean, I think. Different. Yeah. So when you hear the term warrior women, and you've been involved, you've actually known me for as long as I've had this podcast. Yeah. And I started addressing women. So, and um, <laughs> I still play your speech that you did at Brand New for People because it was so great. Oh, it's so it great. It's so great. <laughs> I mean, everybody was dancing. So, yeah. um, when you hear the term warrior women, like what comes to mind? What do you think of? Mm -hmm. Warrior women. I love that because I think it's such a beautiful blend of of both the feminine and the masculine, right? So women are feminine in, a, in their true nature, but there's a, a warrior. There's a strength within us all. And so it's a, it's that beautiful meeting of both. I love that. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm writing an anthem for the podcast. Just Ooh. FYI, yeah. Hey. So it should be out at the end of the month. <laughs> um, That's so great. <laughs> yeah, I think um, you know, embodying that that spirit yeah. is really, really important because I I think one of the things is when I think about why am I doing warrior women, I think oh, when I think about it, it makes me feel stronger in what I'm doing. So yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. You know, when you're on top of it. When you think about it, it kind of changes things. So it does. It totally does. I love it. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk about. Well, let's talk about the things you have coming up first. Okay. Let's then let's talk about your free gift. So what do you have coming up um, that people might want to know about? Um. So I still have my book that's for sale. What if it were easy? It's available at all places. You can buy books. <laughs> um, so uh, definitely check that out. Um, I'm also going to be doing, um, I'm, I'm offering a three month uh, coaching, sort of like a platinum package for people. That's a combination of regular coaching and modus size. Nice. Um, and depending on what your specific goal is, we will, um, you know, if it's more health oriented, then we'll take a look at some of the nutrition aspects of it, too. If it's more business oriented, we will go that direction. Um, but uh, that's that I'm offering right now. And um, I'm actually doing a talk in Westchester next Saturday. Um, nice. Yes, I can get you the details for that if yeah. you Who's have it there? anywhere. Or you can check out is my Instagram. or is it something public? No, it's public. Anybody can come. Oh. It's, a, it's, a, it's a full day event and I'm going to be doing um, speaking at it. So Send it over. I'll push it out. Sure. Ah, that would be great. And um, I'm available on all of the social media stuff. So check out that. And I always post any events or any anything that I've got coming up. Okay, so talk about your, thank you for sharing that. In the show notes, just so everybody knows, you know, after we edit this and send it out, we will provide all of Sonia's links and her offer and social, definitely connect with her. So yeah. talk to us a little bit about your offer for our audience. Right, so I thought just to give people a, send, a chance to sort of experience Moda Size, the Moda Size bundle might be fun. Um, and so that's on my website, soniasatra.com and go under the products page at the very end. There's a Moda Size bundle and that is a Moda Size um, aerobics class. That was one of the first ones I came out of the gate with that was um, created into sort of a, a downloadable program and uh, so do it at whatever level you're at. Um, and if you don't love aerobics, there's also an audio that you can do when you're walking or riding or doing anything else that you like. And there's a workbook that goes along that takes you through the process so that you can actually write out the answers um, to the whole Moda Size program. That's wonderful. So, and in your in your opinion, when you do, because I do a lot of online courses and things for people, how do, how, how, um, because people always ask when you deliver a course or something, well, how, how much time should I commit to it? So in your case, in your program, how much time should somebody commit to it? Like, is this a 12 week thing or is it a month or is it the course? Nah, this one, this one is much simpler. Um, it, it's a class. It's a, it's a 40 okay. minute um, aerobic class. So if you um, oh. are so inclined to do that, you can, and, and that's something you can repeat. That's the idea. You could use it for any goal at any time. Um, you know, I don't, people ask me, how many times should I modicize a week? Um, 
I do a little bit every day just because I can't not. Um, but yeah. I probably recommend sure. <laughs> like a good three times a week, I think is good, you know, to sort of um, to, to reconnect to it because that gets you connected both to the energy and to the goal. And you'll come up with a lot of ideas. It's pretty incredible. And make sure you jot those down because those are goals. And that is really like the kind of stuff that you want to take action on. Um, and then the workbook, uh, you, you know, it's, you could do it on, it's, it doesn't have to take you that long. I don't know, an hour, maybe oh, that's <laughs> a lot of time. not a lot of time. Um, and then the audio is also just something that you can use anytime. That's a, that's a little bit shorter and, uh, it's more like 30 minutes or yeah, 25 minutes. And, uh, and that's really just so that if you're going for a walk and you need to sort of reconnect to it, it, it gives you that option in case aerobics isn't your thing. <laughs> Oh, that's very, it all sounds very doable. And that's, I think. It's to this one is really doable and it's really meant to have as a, a tool in your toolkit. Um, it's meant to be repeatable. It's meant to redo. It's not like a one and done course that you do. And you, yeah, you know, this exactly. is like, this is your regular kind of modicized in your, in your pocket. <laughs> I like that. Modicized in your pocket. Well, I'll be putting it in my pocket for sure. Awesome. Maybe, and maybe my puppy. I think she needs to calm down and needs some goals for 2024. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, She's been really good. Oh, and so in order to access this, put in the code, all caps, WARRIOR. Yes, WARRIOR. So we will include all of this in the show notes. Yes. And um, before I let Sonia go, I want to I want to thank you so much for being on. All this great advice. Uh, I trust, I don't like the word hope. I trust that this yes. will help you all move forward with whatever your goals are, help you clarify. We talked a lot about clarification mm -hmm. today, proper use and embodiment of energy, which is really important. Um, kind of thinking more growth and contribution, as Sonia so poignantly said, as opposed to just thinking down uh, and movement. And so, you know, they can help everyone, whether you're a man watching Royal Women in Business or a female yes. leader or an entrepreneur or a lot of the artists that we serve. You could Absolutely. definitely use this. Yeah, for so sure. We're... And I'm very open to like, if there's something that you heard today that you want to know more about, or you're just curious, or you have a, you try and you have a question about just, you know, through send me an email or a message or something. I'm happy to answer anything. Thank you. Yes. So we'll, I will provide all the contact information, your gift and all of your links in the show notes. Uh, but before I let you go and we end uh, Warrior Women in Business podcast episode 47, I just wanted to mention a few things. So mm -hmm. first of all, Warrior Women in Business, if you haven't noticed in the last year, well, we basically got shut down during COVID, tried to reemerge, shut down again, and then restarted. It's been pretty crazy, um, but we are marching forward in 2024. Last year was our first Warrior Women in Business Beverly Hills event, which went really, really well. I'm very yeah. involved with the Beverly Hills Chamber of Commerce and their WVN Women's Business Network, amazing women. So look out for events uh, with Warrior Women in Business in Beverly Hills in Los Angeles. Yay. I'll be out there. I'm speaking at the uh, NAM conference, which is the largest music industry conference on yes. artist monetization and how artists can really monetize their talent. Uh, that's coming up January 28th in Anaheim. So any women that are out there, female artists, if you want to learn about NAM and that event, and you're looking to launch your career, please come meet with me. I'm going to be in LA and then Anaheim for about five days. And so the West Coast is becoming very important for Warrior Women in Business. In New York 2024, we'll be doing some events. Obviously, look out for those. And I think also equally important is that we partner with other women's organizations. So if you run a women's organization and you're looking to come up with some really great events that can help the community and help women grow, whether it's you're in arts and culture where I spend a lot of my time or you're in business, please reach out to get reach out to me to find out about maybe possibly what we can do together. As I mentioned during this podcast, um, we're looking to do something with the new uh, National Women's Hockey League, which is starting at the end of January. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that we're looking at right now. Um, so no idea will be throw out the window. You can reach us, warriorwomenbusiness.com. Uh, again, everything is in the show notes. Please get involved. And the most important thing from today is, you know, start to take be aware of what you're doing and how movement can help and how you can transform and grow in 2024. And it's never too late. Also, I don't know if you've seen this in your practice, Sonia, but I mean, I have women that are like in their seventies and eighties, yes. 
that I deal with. So age, and I always say age doesn't matter. It's my own thing. I don't really ever care about age. So mm -hmm. whether you're young or old, if you're struggling, you want to get somewhere, you know, there's women like us that might have the answers for you. So please, the most important thing is, is to reach out. Um, yes. So that being said, I'm going to close Warrior Women in Business podcast episode 47. Look out for upcoming guests. And if you're interested in being a guest, please shoot over your story to us through the website and we'll we'll take a review on that. So again, thank you so much, Sonia, for being on today. Thank you. Thank you. Really this was fun. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good year. And um yeah, so reach out. Uh again, thanks. Thank you everybody for tuning in. And we'll see you for the next episode, if not a Warrior Woman business event near you. Thank you. Excellent. As I always say, go out and shine. <laughs> <laughs> okay.